Welcome in, everyone. It's time to get live and loud and ready for our Massachusetts School Administrators Association Rocket League Finals. I'm Hell Monkey Man in the booth alongside Orbital as we get you going into it here for this best of seven grand final. It's a culmination of an entire season there up in the great northeast up in Massachusetts and, of course, over at the Helix Esports uh, Stadium hanging out over in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Orbital, you and I, we get to see this one from home having a great time and of course seeing what these young students can be able to throw down it's going to be an amazing time but because of course this is the grand finals we mentioned it before but i'm sure those at the stadium understand this thing ongoing throughout the entirety of the day it's just the culmination of their talents of their endurance run right now we are seeing challenges at the net here in game number one Tewksbury memorial high school going up against tri-county regional vocational technical and they are going to put it all on the line is an early test because we will be going through a full best of seven of course you just got to grab four before you're on your way out this is a bit of vengeance because it has been a perfect season for Tewksbury Memorial they went eight and oh in the regular season and they have been perfect throughout this bracket now trying to continue to do the same thing here but so far they're under fire by Tri-County and their their only regular season loss was to Tewksbury so that's why they're bringing the heat early here in game one and to take an early march against an opponent is huge when it comes to these long series. Any sort of advantage is something that you need to take early on and to take advantage of as well. If a team is lax in their defense, if you can punish that early before they get it closed up, you are gold. And I've seen games come down to two or three sweet goals that shouldn't have happened that did. And a team wins off of it. And that can be the entire difference between a series win or a loss will be getting the name switched up. They are, in fact, a little bit backwards. So right now, it's actually Tewksbury Memorial that is in the lead at this current point in time. And Tri-County Cougars that are going to be now facing their first deficit. Of course, this is a uh, TMHS group that has been very dominant throughout the regular season into this bracket position. Of course, there's only one best of seven before they are able to lift the trophy here in Massachusetts. Try for the turnaround. Cappy Barra just with a oh. pitch and go. And what a turn to isolate the entirety of the defense. I love this simple toss as well. Didn't even touch the ball, just gently ramped it up and over as the Capybara does. I mean, that is that is simple as simple gets in for the Tewksbury. I think this is going to be a pretty big item for them. They are, as you said, a squad that has been undefeated so far, really showed their stuff, but we're seeing it here individually looking like a stars. But of course, for Tri County, they're going to try and do the same. This is only game number one. Not if you let game ones go to the wayside, you just got to get something out of it. It's a tone setter. It's real. It's not a trend set. It's simply your starter kit. What you can do at the beginning of what could be an hour-long bout, especially the midway mark of it, at least for this first game, you see the you see the Cougars really getting stunted on, and especially because Shriek just throws one from distance. It's Yago that took away from the early bit of aggression. You see a double commit there from the Cougars can't be replicating those same kind of things. But if there's ever a game orbital for us to see the Cougars possibly uh, find running away from them, just let it be game one. And, and like I said, this is, as you said earlier, the trendsetter. But for me, it's much more about taking apart the opponent. For Tewksbury, you're like, hey, this is a team that we've beaten before. For Tri-County, it's to say, hey, who do we need to focus on right now? Who's scoring most of the goals? Who's getting in our way the most? And if you can start to identify those key points, who's having a really good uh, early start to the series, maybe you can start pushing on some of those points. Maybe you can start looking at those demos, get a little bit more physical in that aspect, and start trying to ramp up the speed of that game. Right now, though, is a challenge as Tewksbury are more than willing to be on that aggressive side. It's going to be a push against the wall as it's to right back out. Tri-County going to try and fire away. Long ball shot again. Still ball. Unfortunately here for Tri-County, uh, they're, they're kind of uh, on the nerve side of things. That's going to be over and around Dre. I know there's a lot of fans for Dre in the chat, and they are going to be trying to give up every bit of value for all the cheers that they're giving to them. Just a barn burner from distance. They find the first man caught unawares, especially because they just rotated on the side of Tewksbury. So you at least get one. You got 94 seconds to go. Let's see what else he can get for the remainder of game one. 
I think right now you're more than happy to keep it within the two, but as he said, a little bit of time to work with. And right now, challenges to be made. That one felt like it was a little bit of an opportunistic one. And Kavibara is saying, hey, I don't want to let that one go through right now. Tri County, though, having to put up a stalwart defense, but Shriek more than available, but misses out. That felt like a very open net. But unfortunately, not able to put it through because that is a charge or right back denial by Tewksbury as they try and get the ball back under control. Not quite parking the bus, just put it in neutral and let it glide across that goal line. So, with a minute to go, does Tewksbury see that go in the opposite direction and actually haunt them for later? I don't think they're too worried, at least for right now. AB and Liv looking for a moment to at least find some pressure in that corner. They end up stopping it right in front of the box. That's not what you want to do, especially when Shriek is going to go and find what they left behind. So, so simple. And you can see it there. The follow-up looked glorious. And unfortunately, the defense was just a little bit late on that punch. So this is going to be feeling pretty dang good for Cheeksbury right now. Once again, the leaders here in this matchup saying, hey, we had enough of the delay. We are going to look to bring home this trophy. 40 seconds left. Game number one. We've seen we've seen a lot of best of sevens. So you're in and out this classic school year. And of course, just trying to make sure everyone finds a trophy, a crown, and otherwise. So uh, this is going to be your first step in the right direction if you are Tewksbury Memorial. In fact, Shriek has really come alive, finding a couple of big goals. But with less than a half minute to go here, Orbital, it's been done since about the 3-0 mark. The rest is just cherry on top. And I think... As much as we do say it's done, it still feels good to have that gap widen. If you have had such a dominant performance throughout the entirety of the tournament and in the regular season, you want to throw it down here as well. You want to show that no matter who you meet in bracket, you are the stronger team. I think that's a great way to think about it. We are kind of hammering down on this factor. 15 seconds left, and the wider the gap, the better it feels. The more you can relax throughout the entirety. Same with a game score as well. That's something that we're going to be watching for is Will Tewksbury go out to an early lead in that roll through one more goal icing on the cake gonna go ahead and give some love to the capybaras as it's six to one for Tewksbury so it's a little bit of extra put on there for Tewksbury Memorial and of course they've actually been perfect through this bracket through and through 4-0 in, in the quarters 4-0 in the semis and now I mean maybe this will be a campaign that completes with a good old 12 and 0 when it comes to the total playoff that will drop to the ground and Tewksbury they will ascend at least one single step they go to 1 and 0 into this best of seven so with only five shots by Tri-County didn't get to visit the orange half too often but eight shots a piece and two Hatties, including a playmaker shriek. Uh, after Capybar and Yago started things off, uh, Orbital, they, they really started just running it down. They did, and it also felt very individualistic. I always love talking about this. It's a little bit different between the two. It's uh, This is a factor that I really do enjoy when we see some of the dominant teams. Are they dominant because of their team play, or are they dominant because of their mechanical play? And honestly, usually it's hand-in-hand. Hand. Normally, when you see a good team, it's like, okay, they're doing really, really well. No matter what, they feel strong, they feel powerful, and hey, they take control of the game. But I like to look a little bit deeper. If it's individualistic, that needs to be identified. Hey, are the players much more uh, powerful on their own? Do they like to set their own plays or not? Right now, Tewksbury just seem good they love going pretty aggressive for some of those balls and if the opportunity arises they're going to try and make a kick however i've seen a lot of teamwork plays you know from that midfield you go ahead and follow up you say hey my teammates there to help out so i think right now Tewksbury had the best of both worlds Tewksbury definitely did and there's something that has to be said about tri county cougars dre if they're going to end up getting some confidence it's going to be in the main captain but no it's going to be capybara again this is going to be a very familiar sight here for Tewksbury Memorial, seeing the flight from Bar. Nice little extra bounce in the last kick to get around the third man. This is the player that started off things so successfully in game number one. They already strike true here in the first 30 seconds. I mean, I would do pretty well too if I love Capybaras. I mean, I think it's a great way to do it. And, you know, you have a little bit of fun with it. You always do need, I want to say kind of that front one, the one that's going to start things off for you. The one that, <clears throat> in the game, is able to kind of draw that feeling forward. Say, hey, put us in a good mood. Go ahead, get the scores down, and make those opportunities rise. And then the rest kind of falls into place. Uh, anyone that has competed, whether in traditional sports or in esports here, 
understands the importance of that one player that kind of makes you feel comfortable. The more comfortable you are in this matchup, the better. However, that's great to send one in themselves and say, hey, it ain't going to be that easy. Saw 50 right around one, and then Iago had to just burn through what was left. Shriek, not at all in a position to take that challenge on. So a good find. They got it around Capybara, and they were able to slow them down early. So just over the first minute here in game number two, that's a fantastic response here for, for the Tri-County Cougars to remind Tewksbury that they're not going to be able to get this one for free. Father of God looking for a big challenge. A bit of a whifty, but they're going to be able to find the ball and some boost, but you're not going to find yourself some defense. Tri-County trying to set themselves up for a good time. Iago, though, sets themselves up for a one-two on their own, and the Dragons more with a second look at this high ball by the way just hey i got the opportunity and an easy punch to the lower side of the door that's so tough too because you saw dre as the last man on that layer of uh, uh, basically a layer triple commit out of the tri-county cougars they ended up on the top side of the post but it was shooting underneath them that was the crux of the situation dre already in the early challenge you gotta trust in the teammates they do double commit but father of god is able to at least get one now, as we go through the first 100 seconds and try to advance upfield, Father of God involved one more time. Dre is going to get a little bit quicker in front of Avian. They know it's a bit slower, but Avian is given a love nudge in the right direction, be it by teammate or by force of will from their opponent. Look at a drag it through. What a double by oh. Dre. We stay within two. We're dead even. Right now, it's a one-man army as Dre is forcing Tri-County Cougars to fight for every inch of this game. And honestly, Tewksbury, we know they got here in 4-0 fashion, but we also don't know the score lines of those games, and that might speak a whole different story, of course, for the team. They say no tie today. We're going to go ahead and throw down one more. Doesn't matter what the score is, we only see W's if you're on the side of Tewksbury Memorial. Dre, just a, just a car length and a half too far from being able to find another save, an immediate response from out of Tewksbury. So Cougars, they're finding some magic with Dre. And you know, when you look at Tewksbury Memorial, the regular season, they had three game losses in the entirety of all of that. But all their matches won. The one time they dropped two and it was a game five, it was Westport Wildcats, who, guess who, Tri-County Cougars just beat a moment ago in a 4-1 semifinal. So if you're up to the task and up to snuff, it's got to be right now to be able to find that same kind of magic that maybe the Wildcats had in the regular season, but you got to find it in the biggest moment here in the, in the postseason. Let's see what they can do here. The scramble as we reach past halftime. Those goals came in very, very quickly, and I am fully impressed with how this game has gone. I love seeing the adjustments so far. Andrea has really stepped up, but now I still want to see the rest of them as well. And trying to give themselves a little bit of an opportunity, but with that ball rolling off to the sidelines, it's going to be a little bit of a dick will play. Hard charge there. Shriek trying to stream one in. Fortunately, no one's there to help out. Just going to reposition. And look at these bumps. Avian jostled every which way. So try County Cougars having to set themselves up in a two-man defense. Shriek is uh, making it uncomfortable back there, and Dre yep. is going to at least try to get an extension by one, living it onto the midfield line. Cappy Bar with a free shot. That's going to be a top shelf dinger right with 100 seconds to go. Yago set him up and told Cappy Bar to knock it down. This is now Cappy Bar being gifted all of the opportunities, and I really like this. Uh, what I talked about earlier in game number one, learn who's having a pretty good game and a pretty good series. Who's basically set to go who's in that flow state and right now it feels like capybara is the one capybara has been that mainstay striker that they sent forward and shriek is more than ready to facilitate same with yago you go ahead and give your straight up striker the best opportunities and when it's gifted like that you cannot deny five for two story right now they are punishing the double commits which were cleaned up for a little bit by trin uh, by tri county but unfortunately, when the pressure just becomes just this narrow field, you don't get to exist on too much other green grass, then you're going to commit some further mistakes. And it's just about who's going to be able to be more uptick against this high-flying offense 
that two player Memorial is able to put up. That's gonna be a soft push. Avian will commit, doesn't have any extra boost to be able to support, but we're gonna find some on their trek back to their defensive half. Dre wants to take this one away. They find the first, but not the second, as Capybara again comes slinging it to the backboard. We have less than a minute remaining. It is a three goal lead for right now, and we've seen them be able to score. Gonna see a lot more here soon. And that's really on Tri-County. We want to see them really come alive for the entire team. They've been trying to fight the entire time. I give them a lot of credit for that one, but Dre's been the only one to really find those pockets and shot opportunities. Maybe they can it on their own. Gonna try and bolt towards that goal. And it's gonna be another shot, but it hits off that goal post. Very timely defense coming out of Tewksbury's side, and now they get a chance in their own. They already have enough to secure the end of this game, but Dre is gonna try and run in your fear in 20 seconds left, and Tewksbury have the opportunity to go up 2-0 in the series. That was a great read by Dre just a second ago. That one's gonna end up popping wide, but Tewksbury doesn't need any more on the scoreboard to be able to win this. They had a three-goal differential for a while, and that's what it's going to stay. 5-2. Cougars found a couple. They're going to have to find a couple more if they're going to try and keep up with this pace. Luckily for them, Tewksbury can't keep, uh, take those goals with them in a game number three. But, I mean, five's the, uh, minimum the magic number. Four shots for Dre. Going to need some help because it was 10 on the other side for Tewksbury Memorial. And I do want to give credit where credit is due. It's not like Tri-County are not trying to get in the way. I mean, anyone that plays right now and is in the Grand Finals is trying their best. But I wanted to point to another number that we saw right before we did go to this post-game screen. Streak had 21 bumps, not demos, bumps. That is a ridiculous number of denial tools. And when we talk about bumps, it's a whole different factor of the game. Every single play starts with the run-up, with the setup. Hey, we're going to charge out left side of the field. Let's go ahead and try and push towards midfield as a squatter. Set up on the other side. I'm going to try and pass it to you. Anything of that sort. A bump screws with your timing so well. And to have 21 found means that Tri-County were trying, I think. But the bumps were making it look like they were doing nothing. Well done by Shriek. The unsung hero, it feels like, of the game. If I'm, uh, if I'm getting, uh, you know, out physical in a game, I definitely want to be demoed. I don't want to be bumped because bump <laughs> just feels awful. Oh, trying to be able to turn around and already finding themselves a magical save here in the first 15 seconds for Tri-County. And yet the door is open, but Dre slams it shut. They are under fire, a non-stop barrage. It may be Champions Field, but I'm pretty sure Tewksbury Memorial just stamped their school's logo all over some blue grass. They got wiped away, luckily, by the Cougars as they survived the early barrage. Being able to survive, but the shield is starting to show some cracks here. Maybe try kind of do some fire back, though. While Tewksbury is on a little bit of a break, ball passes right in front, timing not right there, but Dre is going to try and set it up again. Goes for the boost, tries to settle in, two defenders knock it away, and now a chance, a ball right over the defender, open net, no one else is there, and Shriek sends it in! Oh man, that, this is the one play. You, you tell Avian, you got to play slow, you got to play calculated, because if you challenge right there, no one's at home. They were able to use at least a few small pads and then went all in, but it was just one extra deep on the inside and that made the tires shriek. So for the first minute, it was Cougars surviving. They actually played into a counter, which looked pretty promising, but Two Fair Memorial did not give up any space. I'm pretty sure they had all three cars in the net ready to defend like a giant orange wall. And this one, well, that's gonna be threatening. It's gonna go to the back, to the crossbar, to the backboard, maybe the third, third man gets involved. Still a four. <laughs> but it just takes four. It just takes four. I, I love the fact that Shriek was the one to start that, I think. In, or no, secondary. And it's just like, hey, listen, you got to finish it. This is what it means to follow up, by the way. Anyone that is learning to get into Rocket League, in teams especially, you got to follow up on your shots all the time. Never expect it to go in and fall back. You never know what opportunity you're going to miss out on. Two Spirit are showing why they have been undefeated in these runs, and I am wholly impressed with what I have seen. I expect to see even more from them as well, as we're not even done with halfway through this game. Excited for what else is coming. It's very memorial. They are really just kind of running it forward. Dre on some of these pre jumps looking so, so good, but still. They don't want to be the best defensive player. They want to be able to add some offensive prowess onto the pitch as well. Looking for that bump. I love the streak ahead, but they actually have to slow things down. There's no boost. 
as they go to that midfield you see them in your forward array and look at that ceiling of a challenge as well they know they can be faster than the majority of the Tewksbury Memorial squad but it's about getting there in a timely fashion to be able to also enable their team there's a double commit ends up being a team but that's a challenge they could take advantage of this misrotation a nice counter but of course it's Capybara that's able to put it away and honestly, Dre feels like the one-man army right now. I, I'm just trying to watch and see who else is going to try and step up. And it, it just feels like even the side of Tri County are kind of giving Dre a lot of room to work with. However, the boosts are being stolen away. So all this aggression by a single player is kind of nullified, and that's where the teammates need to come in. If you can get some passive plays down, maybe you can help out clear some of that distance that one player is just trying to have. Another aggressive front by this Tewksbury squad is not going to work, and it was only two touches. Now you're going to try and fire back. Can you juggle Copy Bar? Gonna swing back towards that goal and well done on that save. Still advancing for the midfield line. That's a better, better look that we've gotten out of the Cougars for a while. Tewksbury seems pretty measured. You're talking about how they're just kind of surrendering space. They know to force Dre to, in that one-man army concept, use the majority of their boost and then just isolate their teammates, shriek. It was a great follow-up by Capybara with the drop down. Dre was hoping to air this one out, but look how fast Capybara was on that setup. That is ridiculous, by the way. This is immensely powerful, is all I can say. Normally, when you see a game in a series, you see one player step up, like we're talking about Dre. Dre is the one that we're all kind of keeping eyes on. Right now, it, it feels like Tube Spirit are almost rotating who they are giving priority to. First game, of course, was anyone's game. It was Capybara and Shriek scoring a majority share of the goals. Three and three. Game two was a lot of Capybara. I think that was four or five that we saw in there. And then now it's Shriek who has been granted three totals so far. Every single goal that is scored by Tube Spirit for a hat trick on the screen. He's almost put us on series one gonna be a nice challenge and this is you know every single layer of both squads is really finding either purpose or a need to be purposeful and capybara oh <laughs> that one a little bit too fast it ends up going very high and we'll give dre at least some life to move up field and I mean, you know that Tewksbury Memorial feels very confident about what they can do holistically as a total squad, which is why even with Dre and all their skill and all this push, really finds himself at odds. It's just going to be the run it down one more oh, time. So Capybara good. sets it up for Shriek. And though they didn't get the goal themselves, I mean, Shriek, they, they will gobble up these opportunities. <laughs> I feel that was like an obvious one as well. We saw the defender in front. Capybara was like, ah. You fell for it. I ain't the one scoring the goals. I'm just here to put a final statement on this game. 40 seconds left. So roll off the kickoff as it, the, the 50 drives towards the sideline. And it's just this squad, Tewksbury. We're seeing so much control and power from them. I have been wholly impressed with their adjustments as well. Game to game. A little bit of bumping action as a dead ball almost ekes in for Tri County, but they aren't going to have it instead. It's a goal right back. Happy Barra. No assist this time. You know, the magical five just keeps popping up. Do I need to go get like five lotto tickets and put, just put five across them? I don't know. I'll figure that out here later on. But for right now, uh, it's been a bit of stemming of the bleeding and then ripping off the band aid a bit too soon before the coagulation begins. Uh, you know, Cougars. They see themselves in this deficit. They're going to be going down 0-3 in this series. It is going to be a tough mountain to climb. They were able to make a great draw up in that semifinal. But Tewksbury Memorial is trying to end out a perfect racket going possibly 12-0 here in it for the MSAA Finals. They're one step away, Orbital, from completing that streak. Oh, man. Look at the shots on goal, by the way. Five total by Dre, and yet five alone on Capybara. Shriek outpaced that by a mile with seven. And Yago with three of their own. You can see the disparity right there. And honestly, I'm sitting here watching. Dre has been trying their hardest the entire time in this series. But Avian and Father, we are just watching and waiting, hoping they can come online as well. It's, 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 it's tough at times, honestly, especially because if you have someone like when we go into high schools and we see the competition, you don't have the same kind of recruiting that happens when it goes into collegiate, into pro. So you're like, OK, 
what do we do with our student population? What do we do with our body? And sometimes you have these amazing weapons. Dre is obviously fantastic. Their team is trying to keep with the same exact pace, but then in that focus, in that same moment, you have to weaponize them, and they, of course, have to be ready on the day. Could be nerves, simply could be trying to keep up with their MVP. At the end of the day, it has to be a, a total team effort. And right now, Tooth Bear Memorial is looking like they're all well-balanced in that concept. We're going into game number four. And the Cougars, I mean, they're just a step away from holding up the trophy. Right, rather teammates. I was about to say, I was like, Cougars are down right now. And Shriek is like, hey, I heard you say Cougars. Get our name right. <laughs> Shriek is saying Cougars are the ones in the lead. Solid play right there once again. You know, uh, well, you know, maybe they'll let the Cougars hold the trophy. You know, you can, you can still share it. You know, it's, I will never hold an LEC trophy, but one day I might touch it. I may also get arrested. And they'll say, you don't even play this game. We'll get to find <laughs> out later. 30 seconds in and Tewksbury. Able to get that score. I want to see a. You know what? There's one thing to be said as well. If you're going to be in these grand finals, don't let anything be left on the table. I want to see Cougars challenging. I don't want them to overcommit, but I want them to hit these these rotations hard. And I want them, them to be just going forward and forcing Tewksbury to be uncomfortable and to earn each of these goals. They're looking for one. Oh, Capybara ends up getting the better of this one. I like the angle played as well. We've seen the team play coordination coming out of Tube Spray, and then this one was just all that slight little dip. Take a look at that one straight to the center. Easy does it. And in the first minute as well, I'd also like to add on to your statement. I would like to see the Cougars get very physical. I want to see more demos as well. If you can start demoing, maybe you can start disrupting some of these team coordinated plays that Tewksbury is throwing down. Yes, you'll probably get demoed on your own. That's part of the game. You're going to draw out some physicality on the other end. But at this point, the team coordination from Tewksbury is just too strong. You need to find some way to deny that. It is, it is another level because it has been so patient about how they want to take these attack and then each player individually for Tewksbury has been very confident how they want to execute. They know they have to get rid of Dre and once they're around Dre, it just starts to sink. Dre in a 1v1 as they actually have backup in the form of AV and you're going to see Father of God in the net waiting it out. Dre is going to replace them as they have to rotate off that corner. It goes off the crossbar, front face uncontested and untended to, but now more than the first 100 seconds, Dre is going to try and cut up into this rotation. He gets a little bit of a team bump, looking for the same thing against their opponent. And that ends up just being a nice dribble. Back pass, maybe? He's trying to hold him by the hand. Father God sends it up to midfield. Tries to moonwalk it back to the team to set it up for a forward slant. Not really going to happen, though. He can't lean like Michael Jackson himself. This is Tri-County Cougars, though. Trying to fight for their tournament life here. Oh. And Shriek is more than happy to send one a high. Try to put into the corner, prep for the rest of the teammates. And that's where Capybara comes into play. It was going to be off course either way, but they do lose control. So try counting Cougars. Running down the other side of the field, Diago's trying to join the rest of the team. He says, oh, okay, yes, going back the other way. The amount of adjustments I just saw Capybara make in that flight pattern was actually kind of nuts. They were half rolling left, right, all the way around just to make sure that they would take the next angle of attack at the most opportune position. So that's a crazy player. And so far, that's really just tracked the entirety for Tewksbury Memorial at this moment. We're over the midway mark. We're approaching just two minutes to go. Dre is, you know, being let off the leash or at least trying to escape the backyard pin. They end up finding a big demo onto Capybara, which gets rid of one big weapon, but he's got two weapons in front of him. Has some big boost. Looking for the set. Has to get around this corner. Loses his handles on it, and it's a mess in that zone. Everyone just mad scrambling for this ball. Might as well be rugby. At this point, it is one that does benefit Tri-County Cougars. This mess up does deny Tewksbury the chance to really have a set play. Maybe they can break out a goal here. Shot goes a little bit wide, so it's not going to count at all. But another challenge as everyone kind of scrambles through Tewksbury. Three in the corner side, no one out in midfield, but Father is able to deny any sort of pass down the field. Avian flying in from the side, trying to set up for Dre, but the ball has no punch behind it. So Dre's going to try and hang on. Boost is still a little bit available, trying to rise high, but Capybara more than ready. 70 seconds. 
That tick tock of the clock is going to get even louder by the second. Dre looking for a demo. They're trying to prime up what you were chiming up about their orbital. They need to get physical. And to make it easier for them to get over that goal line, they got to get some of these Tewksbury players out of the way. Dre can't catch up to it. They don't want to burn too much boost. Avian out to midfield, but tit for tat and man on man is how Tewksbury wants to play. What a save by Dre. Big, big challenge there. And now it opened up. Maybe you roll it in. You do. Dre from Savior to Hero to all in between. The man can do it all at all points. 40 seconds to try and tie things up. It ain't over yet. Someone's got to be priming up the old windpipe and starting to get ready to sing. But I don't hear no harmony. Don't hear no bell. 40 seconds to go. Tewksbury, do they secure the job? Complete the 12-0. Do you dribble the entire team off the kickoff rip? RIP Shriek burying them. Shriek firing away so well by doing simply a nothing. I would like to point that out. Shriek did everything by doing nothing and securing a goal right back to strike out of Kugis. That took three and a half minutes to score their only goal. It was ripped away in less than 10. Well done by Tewksbury saying, hey, we're having our fun, we're playing things out, but we will be the victors at the end of the day. Just like the daytime infomer infomercial says, nothing is everything. 15 seconds to go. <laughs> That's going to be a punch upfield. Capybara makes the catch. They're trying to sit it off the wide angle. And though a few seconds are remaining, it seems that they put them on ice. they got to score with at least one second left, but no seconds will be there. The perfect 12-0 bracket is obtained by the RL Tewksbury Memorial High School squad. They'll be holding up the trophy here for the MSAA Rocket League Championship. And honestly, it was control through and through. There was not a moment that they really needed to worry. I don't think there was a single moment that I sat there and I was like, man, I don't think they're going to be able to score. I don't think they're going to be able to do anything. Even when it was tied two to two at one point, it was still Tewksbury just pulling away with the game. And I loved every single moment of it. Well, you know what? We got to see a, a squad that uh, definitely had some depth and uh, both programs, they're definitely going to walk away from this, know how to be able to uh, coach good winners and even on the other side, good losers because someone has to and that means that you have a learning moment because it's about the teamwork that happens at the end of the day. A lot of these players, they'll be looking at what it uh, goes into into that secondary uh, schooling and some of these, uh, they'll be able to be in high school and doing this again going into the next semester. But for right now, we're going to take a short break it's going to be another msaa title as we see some super smash brothers in just a little bit will join us uh, again i hope that you're joining us right after this